huh? We always have things on the to-do list. Okay. Um, let me record this though. How about we do that? Ooh, what'd you think about Ooh. that new theme song? <laughs> I loved it. Are we legit now? I loved it. We are officially legit. It's like la 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 la. That is what it actually. It I wish like, I could hear it. Da 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 da. I kind of want to hear it again. Um, it has been. It's something that I've been wanting to do for so long. Well, yeah, Vicky was our <laughs> original creator of the original. We should listen to the original, and then when you upgraded it this last time with the snaps. Oh. And then now um, an actual professional. Not to say you're not professional. An actual. Rude. uh Non uncast member person, an outside source, really jazzed it up for us. Yeah, that was written and composed and figured out. I don't know what he would call it. I should ask him. <laughs> what? Like <laughs> what? What he jingle? did? Like yeah, like what did you do? What would you call like? Oh, this thing I produced it or I hmm. I composed. composed it. Yeah. Um. By his name is Ariel Levine. Ooh. It's a cool name, is right? That, is he in the music industry, like, as a living? Yeah, yeah. I think that's his, like, his career is, like, making music. That's really Of great. all different sorts. But we are his very first podcast <gasps> theme. I reached out to him, and I was like, hey, buddy. He's not really my buddy, but now we're buddies. Well, we're... He's, he's Brian's old buddy. He went to school with Brian. He's from Connecticut, and he lives out here in San Diego also. And I oh. knew that he was doing this kind of stuff. And so I just on I was just like, I'm going to try this. I reached out to him on Instagram, and I was like, hey, would you be willing to help me with this? And he was like, I've never done it before, but I think I can. And that's what and he came up with. And by golly, he did. I told him, I said, you just got, you just got it. I mean, that's great. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you so much. We now have added podcasts to your resume. Yeah, so tell, really, tell everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> our, our pleasure. Anything um, we can do for the music industry. Oh my goodness. What? I'm, I'm sleepy, but I'm always sleepy. My, literally. When are we not? <laughs> literally, <laughs> when are we not? I think, do you think it's because... I kind of think it's because the school year is coming to mm -hmm, an end mm -hmm. and we it's like this um, collective mood amongst all of the parents and you don't even have to really have a kid that's like doing that much in school but it's just like we're all it's a seasonal thing we're all over it like we have our PTO text thread and we have one last huge event this Friday the spring carnival and People are just like, okay, so do we have anyone taking over for the bake sale? We really need volunteers on Friday. We really need volunteers. Spread the word. We need volunteers. And finally someone was like, yeah, I think everyone just feels really tapped out because it's the end of the year. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not even responding anymore. I'm just so over being on the board. Yeah, same. I have, I'm like one of the room parents and they'll be like, please send this out to all of the parents. And I, I have a co-room <laughs> parent and I said to her, I'm like, hey, uh, do you think we need to do this? She's like, I mean, not really. <laughs> They were both just like, does it even matter anymore? I know. It's like, ugh, it's so yeah. over it. We have our board meeting tomorrow. It's our last big meeting of the year. Yeah. And speaking of, <clears throat> our friend Chet Dave will not be there. He decided he's not going. He just said, did I not? I, you said he was going to be on the Zoom meeting. Oh, or, yeah. He's going to be on the Zoom. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So I, I, I guess what I was picturing is everyone was on the Zoom. Oh, no. We're all... so. I'd say 50 50 You're like there's like person. 10 of us 10 to 15 of us in person yeah and then some stragglers on zoom and what did they someone, do like put like a laptop in the center of the room or something basically like mm -hmm. a little camera over um but one of our listeners wrote in or left a voicemail or text I'm not sure how it came I through I think it was a text <laughs> basically saying if I were you, Michelle, I would either A, join Zoom yourself and don't go in person, or B, if you're going to go in person, sit not on camera, sit in a chair that's not on camera so Chet Dave can't see where you're sitting or see when you're leaving because her CNN murder mind is like, he's going to know when you left, he'll be waiting for you in the parking lot, and he will attack then. We're all listening to way too many murder podcasts. I mean, hey, those stories have happened in real life. I suppose it could. So I will go in person and I will, I'm fine sitting off camera. She's going to actually have her address printed on a sweatshirt and she's going to wear it. 
<laughs> Ew, I see him walking all the time, though. Ew. Like I saw out, him this morning. Like, not school-related? Um, like, he walks his kids to school, and he'll walk back, and then he'll walk on, around and can't, like... So he lives close to you. He does. He lives fairly close, yeah. yes. And I saw him walking this morning without kids, though, on campus. It's like, we said this before, when you drop your kids off, you leave. Why are you staying there? Walking on campus? Yeah. Like, inside of the campus? No, in front. Like, walking in front of the school. Okay. But on Weird. camp, like, in the parking lot area. And then my friend, my, my PTO friend, sent me a picture the other day of him walking on the street. And she's like, I could run over this wiener <laughs> right now. This wiener. This wiener. This wiener. But I ran into the principal the other day. And he's like, hey, hey, so everything been okay? Everything okay? That's nice. And I was like, yeah, so far nothing's nothing's happened. And I was like, I'm curious, though, like how the conversation went when you called him and oh, like yeah. said this. Like, like what was his response? And he's like, well, you know, he, he claimed that he was, uh, he apologized profusely to you. But I oh. think by that time you had blocked him on WhatsApp. So you didn't see his apology. Oh, I see. I see. Because because it wouldn't tell him that you blocked him? Is that how it works? I guess. Okay. I don't know. And then um, he's like, and then he actually came and found me at the gate one day and told me that he decided he would resign. So I don't think anyone actually asked him to resign. I think wow. he chose to do it. Chet Dave is such a nice oh. guy. <laughs> wow. My whole opinion of him has just changed. Uh, no, but Werner was like, you know, people like that who have been kind of like in a legal, quote unquote, legal situation, they know the right things to say and do to like take the attention off of him. For sure. You know, it's like, oh, oh I'm, I'm going to say I apologize. I'm going to... I'm going to say, oh, I was just asking about multitasking. I'm going to, oh, you know what? I'm going to resign. I'm going to resign because mm, he's been in hot water before. Yeah. Good. Yep. Good. Have not heard an update on his investigation, but whatever, man. Like you, we said, I'm so over the school year. Just get me out of there. Truly. <laughs> just get me out of there. <laughs> just, just call it. We're calling it. We're Chet calling Dave, it. done. I do feel, Vernon was like, are you nervous about going to the meeting tomorrow? I'm like, now that I know he's not going to be there, no. I love that. I Like, something switched in my head that I'm no longer, like, even if I see him and I make eye contact, it's going to be like, what, bitch? I feel like it's because you know that everybody on campus mm -hmm. knows, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's this, like, mental backup that you have, mm -hmm. you know? So you have everybody on your side because it's the truth, and if you hadn't told anyone, you wouldn't be feeling I'd be suffering way. in silence. That's right. Don't suffer in silence, friends. Don't you Speak dare. up. Tell a friend. <laughs> or two. Or two. Oh, my gosh. Is that your uncensored win? No. No, it's not. You told me you had one. I, I also do. have one. I so want to hear yours. Mine is actually related to the theme song. Because, oh. so, when, you know, you're going through all of this, like, we would email back and forth, like, well, I think we should change this. Or, can we try it this way? Or, I don't really like the way that sounds. And... I'm this last time I changed my mind I had said you know what that sounds great let's do it and he's like all right I'm gonna take the weekend and I'll do it on Monday but on Saturday I kind of listened to them again and I was like you know what no I want something different <gasps> go ahead and so I was gonna send something to him and at first I had written sorry to come back and say this but I actually think I want this like that was kind of the tone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I read it and I was like mm -mm. and I erased it all and I said Hey, new plan. This is what it. Should, this is what I want it to be. And I just said what I wanted it to be, and that was it. I am so proud of you. Thank you. I do that. I try and stop myself as well because mm -hmm. it's so like it, a custom of us being like, "Oh, I'm sorry to bother sorry you. Oh my gosh, sorry I went back on. Oh, oh. I'm the worst. I know, but no, I'm we, not. We're not. We are paying customers. Right. By the way, I still need Venmo you. We are paying <laughs> customers. And I, I paid. Like, him. That's, you know, you, well, yeah, we are entitled to want what we want. Yeah. And I'm sure that as a provider of the music that we will hear, all, like he wants us to like it. He wants to make sure right. that his product is something that we can, that he can be proud of mm -hmm. and that we can be proud of. And I just was really proud of myself in that moment. I'm proud of you too. Thank you. And I think it also helps like think of it. Like always, re anytime you feel like tempted to say sorry, or you feel bad about requesting something you want. Turn the tables, and if someone was asking you the same thing, you'd be like, oh, sure. Like, it wouldn't offend you. No. You wouldn't. You'd be like, yeah, I got you. Don't worry. Yeah. That's it. 
It's not like a diss on your skills. No. No, you're collaborating. I love that. Um, my Uncensored win uh, actually was from a few weeks ago and I've been wanting to talk about it and I kept forgetting. But, uh, and especially I think this is good timing after last week's episode with Erin and just talking about how she's so uncensored as far as like infertility or her, you know, just journey about loss and, and those things are typically hard to talk about and she's, you know, she made a comment saying, fortunately nowadays, it seems like more and more women are talking about it, which is really great. Yes. I know we are, but I know in my personal life, it's always been harder to just randomly say more so to like strangers who don't know my story. Okay. So, you know, I've always had questions of like, oh, you've had two boys and now you have a girl, like you got your girl or um, so it's like not knowing it's that whole thing where she was saying, like, assuming they know your story based mm -hmm. on what they see. Mm -hmm. And in my head, of course, I'm always thinking of like, well, I would have had three boys and, right. you know, because of everything that happened, then I had a girl, but, um, I was at the pool as a friend's community pool a couple weeks ago. And I met one of their neighbors that I'd never met before. And she was also Asian, which I just want to say, I don't know if this happens in your culture, <laughs> but I sometimes feel like Asians have this Connect. unspoken connection of like, oh, what do your kids look like? Or like mixed, you have mixed kids too, because she's married to a white guy. You have mixed kids too. And like you comment on like, oh, your kids are really cute. I don't know. It's like this. Yeah. I think anytime you recognize yourself in another person, you feel like you already have that in common. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, so she had two boys, and she sees me with my two boys, as well as Shay. And she goes, oh, my gosh, your daughter's so cute. And she's coming at it from the sense of, like, she had two boys and she never had a third. Mm -hmm. And so she made a few comments about Shay, and I was like, yeah, I know. I was like, you know. She's the best. She is cute. And she's like, yeah, I mean, I never wanted a third. Like, I... I would never at this point but I do always kind of wonder like what it would be to have a girl sure and I said yeah I mean I I hear that a lot and I think um you know we had two boys and oh and then she said and if I did go for a third I feel like I would just have another boy yeah and I was like you know I think it's actually kind of common to have like three I, I see that a lot like three of the same yeah sex and then you know the fourth and I was like I was actually pre pregnant our third was a boy and I was like, and you know, and then we lost him, but I, and I just like moved forward and she goes, oh, and then I go, and then our fourth pregnancy was a girl. And I, I've like seen that cadence a lot. Like I made it, it was more, I was saying it as the example of the cadence of the genders, Yes. but it came out so smoothly. It was the first time I had, I like fully was aware in my brain that I was saying it. Yeah. I was like, here we go. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, say it. the truth. I'm going to say that I had miscarriage because it's very common and it's okay to say that. And she was just like, I it didn't it. get awkward after. She was just like, mm, and then she was like, and then she was just like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, my other friend had three and da, da, da. So, and did you feel very like grateful for her reaction and the way it went? Yeah. It's like, I could see her processing that I had said that. Yeah. And like, oh, that's a bummer. But then she was just like right back in it. So maybe she had a loss at some point in her life. Maybe she knows several friends who have had a loss. Like maybe it's. Maybe <laughs> I like to hope that she walked away from that interaction of like, you know, people can't just talk about that. Like people can talk about that. Do you think that. that you had a hard time talking about it because you thought it would make it awkward? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want it to be like a pity thing. I didn't exactly. want to make it awkward mm -hmm. or fe make her feel like she had to ask me about it or mm -hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like if somebody said, I feel like if I were her in that position and you said that to me. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, it's just like, it, you're just telling me your story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Way to go. Thank you. Did you, like, think you were going to cry or anything No, like that? and that was, I, I was also kind of proud of myself, not that it's not okay to, it's totally okay to cry, yeah. but I was just, I, because any other time I have ever talked about it. It's emotional. It's emotional, and I typically cry. But I just said it very like that's my it. story, and yeah, I thought I was gonna have three boys too. I was like, well, I'm gonna forever be a boy mom, and you know, like I've accepted that. I was okay with that, 
and then you know we didn't have him and I got pregnant again and it was Shay and like it was just like part of I love it my story it is you did not a better one ever you thank call. you oh yeah okay. that's a really nice win friends we would love to hear your uncensored wins and we love when you send them in so please text call dm email please share we love it we love you um okay so somebody so okay 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 so on an uncensored win kind of like mood here mm -hmm. i've been saying that my eye has been twitching mm. for weeks mm -hmm. <laughs> and i have is no... it still by the way yeah still still not so right it, now though not at this very very second but it ha what has since we've been here it's been like a month has it i think a long time solid three weeks <clears throat> and i <laughs> And so I'm like, well, you know, there's got to be something wrong with me. I should go to the optometrist. Right now it's happening. It's, oh. it's, right, it's, right, it's, right. it's always the right eye? Uh-uh. It was <gasps> the left eye first, and then now it's the I'm right eye. On. And then now it's like the side of my left face. <sighs> anyway, mm -hmm. so I go to the optometrist, and I'm like... Wait, before you say what the optometrist says, can I just say that when you brought it up before, I was like, typically it's like stress. <laughs> and what did I say? And you're like, well, I don't think I'm stressed about anything. Well, it tracks, because... I go and I tell I tell the Did you hear that? Yeah, I don't know what that was. Mm. I had my mom bring me because I thought they were gonna dilate my pupils because I'm like something's definitely wrong with my mm -hmm. eyes. Like, I'm gonna have to be there for hours. Like, can you so they're like, well, let's take pictures of your retina? Mm. Something? I sure. don't know. What like eyeball part? Some eyeball. And they take pictures. And they're very, very, very lovely. And then I go and with like the first person. And they're see. very lovely. Not oh, the not the back. Like you the said people. the pictures were lovely. Like, well, they like, turned, well, out, turned nice. out they were. Okay, I want to just tell you. <laughs> but I go in to finally see the doctor, and she's like looking at all of my stuff, and she goes, "Oh, Katie." She's like so. She's the sweetest fucking woman ever. Like this young, the young doctor, and she's just like, "I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you so much for coming to our office." So I hear that your eye is twitching. Is anything going on? Like, have you been getting enough sleep? Or have you been, you know, drinking more ca caffeine lately? And I was like, all those are good. She's like, and what about stress? Is there anything stressful going on in your life? And I was like, well, I, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I just lost it. I fucking <sighs> lost it. It was like when someone is so nice to you mm -hmm. and obviously it was building up in my face. Mm -hmm. I lost it. And I, it was that also, but the, so <laughs> what I said to her was I go, and this is kind of a reveal to the whole podcast people too, but Brian, I said, my husband was diagnosed with MS officially two weeks, three weeks ago, whatever mm -hmm. day that was. So Brian, has MS. And we will definitely have an episode dedicated all to that. Yeah, and we know because he had to have a follow-up MRI um, his December one, and like, okay, we're going to do another one in April, and they did it, and then it took, like, too long mm -hmm. to get the information, and then they had it. There's another lesion in his brain, so it was official that he has MS. And we've been talking about it a lot. Um, he well, doesn't have any other symptoms. Right. And by the time his eye appointment happened, it had been, I think, like three weeks, it like you said, after. It, so it's not like you found out the day before. No. And so I thought, and when I told you that mm -hmm. I wasn't stressed, I really, in my head and in, you know. Yeah. You're like, what do I have to be stressed about? I'm like, um, I don't know. Your <laughs> husband was just diagnosed with MS. And you're like, well. I guess, but we feel kind of okay about it. Yeah, because we feel like he has no other symptoms. Mm -hmm. We saw the neurologist and he was like, here, take this medicine and chances are it might not ever have any symptoms. And we just, it's just like very all positive, hopeful stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it just felt like we have this in control, right? But it's just another example of like, even if you believe, you fully fucking believe that you are fine, mm -hmm. your body just like your hair falling out your body is going to come up and be like <laughs> um okay like, so that's cute that you think you're fine yeah. but like i'm gonna start making your eyes twitch <laughs> so you can pay attention to your emotional problems that you're suppressing yeah yeah and uh, I, i'm gonna need you to process a little bit more than you think you have you try to, to process a little mm -hmm. and cry a little and just the way she asked me and my realization that like oh my god my body is talking to me and i'm not listening to it I fucking lost it in that poor little doctor's op optometry little chair. And I was like, I'm 
I'm so sorry. Like, can you still do the thing? And this is like all my tears. And she's like, just keep blinking, okay? We'll look at it. And I was like, <laughs> did she seem uncomfortable at all? No, she was so sweet. Aww. She was so sweet. She was just like steady, Betty. Didn't cry. I would have cried. If someone were crying in my office, oh, I, I think know. I would have cried. We would have cried with them. With yeah. But, you know, we're very empathetic people. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You start crying, I start crying, we're just both crying the rest that's of the episode. True. That's true. She was very sweet. But anyway, so yeah, so um that's 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 probably what's going on. Well, has your eye gotten slightly better since that conversation you know, revelation? I thought it would have It would have been a little bit of a story if like profound and then and then my eyes Never stopped twitching immediately well, she told me she <laughs> said when my father was in the hospital for his liver transplant or something my eye twitched for three whole months and i was oh. like okay well that's that's what's great. happening with me that's so great um have you googled like eye twitch eye twitch yeah and, and most are like like how to get rid of it kind of thing yeah they're like chill out I should take a fucking like, nap. Yeah, I know. I should probably meditate a little bit more, maybe. You're going to need to journal, meditate, <laughs> nap, and cry every day for seven days, and you'll be better. That's the, <laughs> that's the prescription they give you on a piece of paper. That's what the doctor, that's what she wrote down. No, but she did say that my eyes, because then I'm like, because I'm like, there's nothing wrong with my eyes. She's like, um, your eyes are perfect. She's like, look at your beautiful retina. Wow. Look at your beautiful people. Look at the veins that go to your optic nerve, which, by the way, is where you would find a... Uh, what are they? Uh, the thing that Brian had. Thank you, but it's autoimmune disease, and I was like, "Yeah, it's his optic nerve." And the, have you heard of oligoncles? Because it's that <laughs> too. It's the oligoncles. <laughs> yeah, well, that's really nice of you. I um, every time I go to the eye doctor, which by the way, Vicky and I randomly <laughs> found out we go to the same <laughs> eye place. I called and I made an appointment for me in Rome because we're due, and I said is there a Dr. Wong that works at this location? And they said, mm-hmm. I said, I'd like to go to her, please, because yes. of your story. She's the sweetest. Tell me what you think. She's so sweet. Um, but yeah, every time they look at my eyes, they're like, so um, there's a little bit of yellow discoloration, and that's from the sun damage. And I was oh. like, is there anything I can do to get rid of it? No. It's just there. Do you not wear sunglasses a lot? I do, but I think it's from the, day, the years I did not. Mm -hmm. And I was just... Laying, laying out in the sun, tanning, asking my eyeballs open. Yeah. Anyway, Take listen care to your, your eyes and listen to your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> take yourself seriously, my girl. Yeah. I feel like that was a big bombshell to drop on an episode we weren't planning on dropping that bombshell. Sorry, that happens. But just know we have a whole, we're going to bring Brian on. We're going to talk about it all. We are now an MS podcast, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the. <laughs> Um, cast MS podcast, cast, cast. uncensored MS, <laughs> Un, ums, 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 the ums <laughs> podcast. Oh shit. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, That's um, life. real quick for our book club, um, cast book. What's it oh, called? it's a real quick book club because, <laughs> um, this book club is made up of two people and only one person read the book. It's not made up of two people because it's made up of you guys listening as well yeah. who actually said you read it too. You did. So we, and we, you know, really, this is the thing. It's like, you guys are hearing this on Friday. Mm. I gotta just be real with you. We're recording on Monday. Yeah. So we didn't give a lot of time for like people to weigh in on this. Right. That's our bad. Here's the thing. That's I have bad. made it to 41% of the book and it has been a struggle for me. And that's... That's hard to say and admit because I'm a quick reader. An avid reader. I, I typically love most books. And I'm going to tell you why I'm having a hard time with this one. Okay. It is set in the 1980s. And I can tell. I can't tell. And the writing style makes it sound like an old time detective. Like I was walking down and I went to Las Vegas. And is, are they... Are they stepping over, crossing the line? Are they nosy? And it's like, it's a bit. Like, the writing is just like, what? I completely People don't talk disagree. Like that. I completely disagree. Oh. I, I think, I mean, I'm sure there are some, like, clues that it's written back then, and I just happen to know that. But, like, I feel like, you know what it, okay, did you watch a lot of Law and Order? <sighs> 
I bet it sounds like that. Yes. Yeah, no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so that's probably like where my like affinity for dun, it. Dun, 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 dun. Is that one order? Yeah, yeah. Do you dun, know dun, it? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. And she was with the nanny in the pool house. Like that's whereas the nowadays like murder psycho wife yeah. books, that's more would never be like that. They would never talk like that. Um, I loved Law and Order. Like, I think I've probably seen every episode of, like, the original Law and Order and then every episode of SVU up to, like, 2006, probably. Mm. Then I kind of stopped. Mm. I got busy. But I loved it, loved it, loved it. The Law and Order. I also really like this book. I read it in, like, a few days. I mean, it's a quick read. It's a super quick read. I like her. I think the character is, like, she's kind of a hard ass, but she's also, like you know, human. I really mm -hmm. liked her. I just want to know, does, does she and the dude ever have some hot steamy sex? And do they talk about it? They do have some sex. Does she describe it well? Yeah, a little bit. I would like a little more of it. I feel like if yeah. we're going to have That's sex. That's the one interesting part it, of it. It should make me horny. Yeah. Like it she's didn't like, make me horny. I find myself like smiling after I talk to him. I'm I, like, okay, let's get to it. I was surprised with the description of the sex on the one hand like I was like oh we're really going there but I don't know if the lead up what you know what I think it was mm -hmm. I didn't trust him from the very beginning oh, I think, yeah and you shouldn't trust him <gasps> oh she mm -hmm. what kind of private investigator doesn't realize okay is she a horny really, one yeah but is she not that good at her job I don't know she's real good but sometimes you just want to have sex Sometimes mm -hmm. you just need some deep with the bad boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think I just didn't trust him, so I couldn't enjoy it. And I do think, like, if you're gonna have a sex scene, like, I'd like it to go up. I wanted to go like Outlander status, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, there's like I need to be like and scene burner. Yep. Absolutely. Upstairs, please. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Um, seven of you read it, so that's just from today. There may have been that's more. That's just of from you. today. That's great. Yeah. Uh huh. And most people said it was, was fine. <laughs> we said, did you love it, hate it, or it was fine? Yep, 71%. It was fine. It was fine. Well, I, I, I wrote loved it. So that's just me. And then um, the two, like, kind of just things was it, it reminded um, someone of Poker Face, which is a show on Peacock with Natasha. Natasha? Awesome. I don't remember her oh. name right now, but that but that show so is actually positive. really, really good. And actually, that show, when you were doing your little um, detective impersonation oh, right now, uh -huh. she's kind of like that, but in a really cool, fun way. Did you ever watch the movie Sin City? No. Bruce oh, was Willis, that like Black Jessica and Alba, uh, Black and White? Yeah, part of The her. way the guy talks, and he's like, I'm walking down a dark alley, yeah. and I knew he was the one across <laughs> That's the like a comic book. Well... That's the voice I hear every time these cheesy lines come out at me. <laughs> One once, and then once someone else said, what the fuck with her talking about her attraction to a 12-year-old? I didn't get to that part in the book. Do you remember that? So here's the thing about me and reading books. Mm -hmm. um, once I'm done, it's literally as though <laughs> she that was a different me. <laughs> and I don't know that person anymore. That person read that book and I bet she loved it. But she didn't tell me how that went. I bet she was appalled by the 12-year-old attraction too. I bet she was, but, but she can't tell you. And, and I don't remember. I couldn't. I don't even remember what 12-year-old we're speaking of. Yeah. So, Marley, you're going to need to. You know what it's remind? Are you watching Um, The Last Thing He Told Me? I um, am. Okay. So, did you read that book? Uh-huh. Okay. So, I read the book, too. And I think, like, because I'm watching it and reading this, and it's kind of like a mystery, you mm -hmm. know? And I was, like, I kept having, like, flashes of, like, that story in my head because she's kind <laughs> of young. I think, yeah, I'm getting it all mixed up here. But that's a good show. Yeah, I like it. So, um, so typical Umcast book clubs, we would then say, and our next book will be <laughs> XYZ. The, the trouble here is we have not picked our next book yet because book club has not happened, happened. until tonight. Yeah. So on our next episode or in our Instagram story, we will... Or both. The next book. And then we'll, we'll have, and then so Michelle will commit to reading it, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a full-fledged discussion about it. Yes. Um, and be better planners about it. But I do like this idea. I like, I like yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. So, you know, we're doing our best. <laughs> but, oh, um, goodness. we did want to take some time and respond to some messages that we got. Yeah. Because we've been putting a few of these off, so we really, we apologize. Yeah. That's just the way it goes sometimes. 
Um, okay, so one of the things that somebody was asking, this is one of my favorites. Well, first they asked, how's Marion? Because you said that, you know, we were talking about yeah, boobs. Yeah, their dense breasts. The dense breasts. Um, all great. Great news. Great. Um, Marion is Werner's mom, sorry. Yeah. Marion is Werner's mother. She went in for a mammogram. They said that they needed to do a biopsy. Um, and our, it's her first biopsy ever. She's going to be 70 next month, so she was very nervous about it. Um, but it all came back fine. It's great. It's great. And in line with your post the other day about your mammogram, it's just like we said, the more information you have, the sooner, just the better it will be. Yeah, it's just, and it feels really good to know, to know, have answers. Like even with Brian's diagnosis, like that's a big one, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also like, okay, now we know for sure. Mm -hmm. So now what do we do, right? Yep. It's nice to just know things. Unless you're like Firefly Lane, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. <laughs> that's oh. coming up. Okay. Let's not get derailed. Okay. okay. Um, so the other one that I liked was um, Marley wrote in and asked, how do we feel about spending a lot of money on ourselves, like splurging on ourselves? Mm -hmm. I would say it depends <laughs> on um, my mood, <laughs> my mood, the time of year, and if Werner has recently closed an escrow uh, or not. It really, you know, like time of year is, is good yep. too. If he closes a couple of deals, I'm like, yep, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy that. We're going to need that for the house. We can buy that. We can do that. And then I feel good about it. Do you not feel guilty afterwards? No, I feel guilty. I'm when, not talking like, about like I bought an air fryer. I'm talking about like, I don't think she's talking about like, like, cause it's not for the house. It's not what we're talking about. Right. You well, talking I about? mean like, okay, I bought this Etsy necklace for myself. Like, okay, Vicky and I went to a jewelry store called Goriana the other month and mm -hmm. we were like, let's get some gold earrings. And we're like, yeah, we deserve something nice. And then we like looked at the price tag and for like true gold diamond encrusted like studs, it was like $450 for and this set. Totally my and we both went, well, thank you so much. We'll go ahead and put these back and uh, boom, boom. adios. Now at that time, I don't know if he had a deal that closed recently, but in my head, I'm like, well, if he had like a really good transaction that he closes, maybe, maybe for my birth, I would make a reason like for my birthday or for mother's day. That's what I'm going to get myself. See, like, I think it depends on the item because I'm not sure. Like, I, I think I never really want it. Like, I will spend a lot of money on certain things. Concert tickets. Concert tickets. For She'll sure. Drop thousands. Mm. Hundreds. Lots of hundreds. Lots of hundreds. Mm. Lots of hundreds. <laughs> it's not hundreds. Ten thousand. Well, if it was second row for John Mayer and the ticket was like a thousand dollars, you'd go. Yeah. So that's, that's thousand. A thousand. She would spend thousand. <laughs> thousand. Like a concert ticket or like even like a like you know, like a new iPhone maybe if that was something I wanted. Mm. Or like something, you know, like a really cool instrument. Like just there's very specific things, kind of like knowing that, that you can't get it any cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so that is the price. And if I want it, I'm just going to I'm just going to suck it up and get it. Now our big ticket items, let's say more than $500, something that you will talk about first before pulling the trigger with Brian. Uh probably. Like you wouldn't just go out and be like, "Hey, I got a new iPhone today." Uh no. No, but I I probably not that you're asking, but yeah. you're just like, "Hey, I think you got getting a new iPhone." Yeah, like there would be a discussion just because that's like mulling it over in my head and like mm -hmm. I have to have like a sounding board on everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, I kind of want this. Like, yeah. do you think that's a dumb thing to want? Do I need it? Like, should I? And then usually he's like, get whatever you want. Oh, that's great. And then I'm like, okay. If it's usually like under 300, I don't feel like I... Okay, but like if you go to Target on your own, right? Oh, and I you're buy And it's like, then I, I was going to get milk and you walk out oh, and it's yeah. like three. Those I don't even tell him. Right, you don't even tell him. That's because those are separate items that happen to like and Costco. <laughs> they add, add it up to Costco. Them. I just get these things and oh, five hundred something dollars. Right. That was a multiple of things I got. But if it's I a one groceries, one ticket item yeah. that's like more than three hundred, let's say, I'll typically be like, I'll mention it. This is coming down the pipe. Yeah. It doesn't have. I don't feel like I do it that often. I guess I don't either because I'm trying to think what the last expensive thing was that I bought. Yeah, I think for me it was the concert ticket. Probably. 
I mean, I did get that piano. So you just were like, I want a piano, I'm gonna buy this. Well, it was like 700 something dollars. So I was like, just so you know, I wanna get this. And he's like, do we really need one? We already have like this keyboard. And I was like, we do because it's not a full sized piano you and need keys. we need the 88 keys. And I was like, so I'm gonna use, I actually made a couple hundred dollars on my uh, Instagram reels. Totally. So I got paid out on that. I'm gonna put that towards it. And he's like, all right, if that's what you wanna do. You know how when I sub every now and then, when I get my sub check, it's mm -hmm. like, even if I, I just, all I do is deposit it, right? But like in my head, it's like this floating mm -hmm. around $200, $300. I'm like, it's free money that I can use. It's true. Can, yeah. It's just floating around in there and grab it whenever I yeah. want. Yeah. That's how I, maybe that's how I justified to myself. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's like this, like this weird, like personal accounting system yeah. that no one else knows about that makes us either feel like really good about yeah. it or like in weak moments, it's like, oh. Like, I could definitely talk myself into it. Like, for example, for the, sure. the facial I'm going to get next week is typically a $275 facial mm -hmm. because it's at this stupid med spa plastic surgery place. But That's because stupid. I refer... <laughs> Where I got my boobs done. <laughs> it's so stupid there. <laughs> um, my new double Ds. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to go to Victoria's Secret. And oh my God, I know. I think they like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But uh, so it's normally $275. And I'm like, I can't just spend $275 on a facial. Oh and then they're like, but you have these points from your surgery. So you get $70 off. And then, oh, you actually just referred someone. You get another $50 off. So I'm like, oh, that's $120 off. You referred someone? I guess. I don't even know who. Oh, great. And then um, they're like, but if you buy a three pack, it's like, you know, seven hundred dollars so you are saving some and then in my head i'm doing the math i'm like okay if i put my 120 off from the 700 then mm -hmm. that's like only five now and i'm trying to justify it in my head and i'm like but they're three separate facials so you're he saving so he doesn't need to know that i'm gonna do that nah, mm -mm. he'll look at my smooth face and just be so grateful that i'm doing whatever i'm doing to take care of it it's so true I mean, when I used to get my hair done, which has been a, like, why would I would go and like it would be like five hundred dollars? Oh you know, God, I know. I remember that one time you spent so much money, dude. <laughs> and you did kind of feel a little like that one. Oh. That made me feel a little sick because yeah. it scared me. She didn't tell me ahead of time, and then she gave. She's like, "Okay, that'll be five hundred and seventy-five dollars." And I was like, like, "I'm sorry, what? What? Plus tip? I almost threw up. Mm -hmm. Plus tip. I know." I texted my, yeah, my I, my hairdresser friend, like, do I have to tip on 500 and such? She's like, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. So, like, $20? No. Anyway. And um, then your hairdresser friend was like, and why aren't you coming to me to do this? No, she, no, she only works, like, no. Okay, she, all right. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's a complicated thing. It is. Spending money so, yeah. on ourselves. That is, I didn't realize that this question was going to open up the can I of could worms. keep going, honestly. Like, it's it just like, it's like, oh man. And then sometimes I do this and like, mm -hmm. I mean, I do feel, I do have like tinges of guilt. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Lots I buy, of guilt. Like, or like I'll buy, like, so I went to Nordstrom Rack the other day and I ended up spending like $350 and I showed you the stuff I got and I, mm -hmm. I tried it on again and again and again. And I just kept thinking like, I don't actually need these mm -hmm. things. And so they're in the bag for me to return. <gasps> Cause I'm just like, I don't like you that. kept some, I kept some, I kept, yeah. like, the I do that all the time yeah. like, in the like shopping high when you're there, mm -hmm. you're like, I deserve this. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten new clothes in a while. This is cute. And then you get home and you're like, do I really need this? Right. And I showed you and you're like, oh, those look just like your other jeans. And I was like, that's true. I know. <laughs> and it's true. But it's cause that's what I like. Right. right. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, what is that? Why are we guilty? Is it because we don't make as much money as our husbands? No, I think it's because we like literally know that we don't need it. I like don't know. I think when I I think when I love it so much, I, I don't feel guilty. I feel happy. That's true. That's true. That's how I you really know. Yeah. If you have a twinge of guilt, really like question if you need this. Yeah, Maybe is it come guilt, back the next day. Or is it like regret? Mm -hmm. Or is it your conscience? It's a Jiminy Cricket being like, mm -hmm. um, but if you can so quickly convince yourself you need this and you're so excited about it, you know you made a great choice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <sighs> like if you say maybe, like to anything <clears throat> in life, like so many times we're like, maybe, mm -hmm. that's a no. Yeah. That's a, ultimately a no. Mm -hmm. You're going to return that later. Mm -hmm. So don't even get it. Walk out without it. And if you really wanted it, you'll go back the next day and get it. That's true. All right. And then you'll really know. That's right. <laughs> 
You're welcome for this therapy on spending the money. <laughs> you have all the answers now. Um, another question before we get to things we're loving. Mm -hmm. What are your summer plans? Oh my God. I love that summer's coming. I'm so excited to sleep in a little bit. Oh, I love that you can even say you can sleep in. That's so great. Just right there, like, and period. That's your And summer. I'm good. <laughs> good to go. Um, it's just weird that school is ending next month. I know. Like in three weeks. It came out of nowhere. We just finished an entire grade. And remember <sighs> being in school and how long it felt? Like yes. so long till summer break. My parents feel the same. I mean, I know it feels like it flew I mean, by, but also yeah. it's almost like, but but in these last few months, we're like, get me. Like, yeah, I'm so done with school stuff. Don't that's true. That's email true. me again. <laughs> um. I, we are traveling, so we're going to go camping a few times already in the books. You're coming camping. August. In August. We need to, like, I don't know. Should I just keep pumping you up about it? Mm -hmm. like, it's going to be awesome. And the um, only reason why I'm committing is because it's so minimal work on my end for this camping trip. Because mm -hmm. Vicky and our friend Jamie and Ricky, mm -hmm. they got, they, they reserved everything already, but the campsites are big enough that... A tag along like me can just plop my tent in their site. Yeah. And because if it were up to me, if you were like, okay, Michelle, if you really want to come, you need to reserve this spot. I she probably wouldn't do, do it. it. She won't do but it. you're like, it's literally reserved. Just show up with your tent. No, like we can literally, we can caravan. We'll all go together. Yeah. Like it'll feel and very then, inclusive. And then like you guys have all the cooking stuff. I don't even have to worry about that. Right. I mean, I'll buy food. Or actually, can I just Venmo you money? <laughs> probably. Probably. Um, uh, I'll bring alcohol. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I'm going to Lake Tahoe. Oh, I'm going to Lake Tahoe, which I haven't been uh, in some years. So When's that? Be nice. That is in, that's the first week of August, I believe. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then the kids have tons of summer camps, which is like yes. a blessing and a curse because it's like you want them to not like waste away in front of the television all summer which is what I would do every right. single summer of my life. But yeah, it was great. It was great. I was also bored lots of times. Yeah, you're bored. But then also, like, if you do too many camps, then you're like, it. well, and yeah, because they're exhausted. Like, mm -hmm. I have to go to another fucking camp. Mm -hmm. And I they're get like, it. I know. That's where our mistake was last year. You we did balance. camp every week, and poor yeah. world was like, I don't want to go. That's too much. So now we've just picked five five weeks kind of scattered and that's a lot i think still no oh really mm -hmm. i don't know some are half days like the week, oh, okay. the weeks are half days we did three and that feels oh, like okay good that's good because then it's also you're going you're going on a trip and, you know, also camps going. are expensive oh my god mm -hmm. what about you what are your summer plans um well rome gets out of school on the 7th of june and the next day we're going to drive out to las vegas okay. for Werner's mother's 70th birthday Mm. I don't know if I'd count that as like vacation, but Probably I not. always love Las Vegas. So we'll be there for uh, the long weekend. Michelle loves to gamble. I do. But you know, that's one of those things that I've gotten guilty with now that I'm old and have kids and I'm married. Yeah, because gambling's so stupid. <laughs> Unless you win. Okay. Do you yeah. remember Pogs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For those youngins listening, yeah. Pogs are those little circular kind of flat cardboard things that have different just random pictures on them and you collected them but then you had a slammer which was like a thick circular metal piece mm -hmm. and you could play with your friend and throw your slammers down onto your pog and whoever I guess flips it over you like get to take the per like whoever wins gets to take the other person's pog I've never played but that sounds right I was googling it today because I was talking about it at work and I had to show these 26 year olds what pogs were because they're like hmm? never heard of them and i was like it clicked i'm like it's like it was like gambling, gambling. for me yeah and i loved collecting the shiny coins yeah it's almost like you know how like um in the olden days they have like kids outside playing like dice or like mm -hmm. any of those things like you know <laughs> like jacks it's like always been some kind of version of mm -hmm. that so yes i do love gambling i have to keep myself in check you now you do um and then we have some friends visiting from Denver, first week of July. We talk about trying to get to San Francisco at some point in the mm -hmm. summer. That's kind of it. I Honestly, feel a nice, nice, I don't know. A simple summer is kind of nice. A slow summer. If you want to, we could go somewhere together. <gasps> you want to pick something to do? 
Yeah. Let's do something. Hello. I like to travel. Mm -hmm. Let's do something. Let's do it. That's another thing though that just girls. <laughs> I actually asked Brenda the other just day. Us. I was like, how do you feel if I went to New York? like with some friends just for the weekend and he was like silent and i was like you're jealous because you want to come too and he's like yeah <laughs> and i'm like okay but if you come now i have the kids come and all of a sudden we're spending five thousand dollars for a weekend girls trip <laughs> it's different it's just different uh that's why you keep it short so like there was i went on this new york trip when i was in i wasn't in college i was an adult but i was young and i left on thursday night mm -hmm. a red eye i think i arrived at like 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. I won't do that now. Sorry. Oh, no. I can't. I mean, I could rally some kind of way, but the red eye... Maybe if I took drugs. Maybe if I took, like, an Ambien, which to I've never done before. Yeah, I just don't... I don't sleep on planes. Does melatonin work for you? I've never tried it. Oh, then pop some of those. I'll do a practice run. If it works at home, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Okay. Um, I left a Thursday night, got there Friday morning, spent all Friday, all Saturday, and left Sunday. And, like, it still is in my memory, like, one of my favorite trips to New York. Did you go by yourself? No, no, no. I, oh. I went with um two other girlfriends. That sounds great. It was really Perfect fun. timing. So, like, you know, it could be something like that. And then Werner doesn't have to feel jealous because, one, it's kind of, like, uh, like hairy. It's, like, you know, a hurried, hairy situation. Right. And, really, it's just one Friday that he takes the kids to school. And they're at school all day. So, it's, like, he has a normal Friday. Yeah. And then you guys can go on, like, a, a week-long mm -hmm. enjoyable time there another time. I agree. You hear that, hon? <laughs> Look at me right now, because he usually listens when we're both in the car. Look at me right now. Nod your head. <laughs> Support this. She needs it. Okay, Werner? Mm -hmm. Listen to me. She needs it. She needs it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Fabulous. What are you loving? Okay, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to tell you what I'm loving. Ooh. But... I like when you have your little mini reveals. Uh -huh. I take it with me everywhere. And literally, if I leave the house and I don't have it, I get upset. It's not the same one. Are you sure? I promise you. I'll show you. It literally she looks... thinks Okay, <laughs> she thinks I'm holding the same lipstick that I How did How many lipsticks do you day. carry with you? Two. Oh. Just the two. I don't know where the other one is. But it's... Bisu Balm. This is the one that is from Target. Oh, Morph 2. Which I really, really, really like. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it's a different color. I keep the Morph 2 and this... Violet FR, um, other one in my purse with me at all times. I put this one on probably more often than I do. Violet that. FR Bisou Balm. The color is called Batiste. Yeah, and it's kind of just like a lip tint, and you can put like as a much lot as on. you want on. Uh huh. And it just feels like you've just been like kissing or something. Like it feels like, or it looks like you were like. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. just really natural. It's very smooth. It does feel like chapstick. It feels like chapstick. It's not like too much. It's just a tint. Very nice natural tint. And I wear it all the time. That's great. And I love it so much. And I actually didn't bring mine, but I did think of a product instead of a show. Well, because I was going to talk about Firefly Lane. Well, I know, and we should because I have things to say about well, it. Well, we should talk about that. But I do want to say that I just got a perfume. By Burberry. You is it Burberry or Burberry? I say Burberry, but yeah. Burberry. It's Burberry. Her. <laughs> Her. Her. By Burberry. Are you wearing it? I am. Can you even smell it though? No. Oh, you. Oh my God. That, okay, so that actually smells like a very famous scent. Oh. Let's smell it again. So I think, okay, and I, it's, it's, I think it's called just Musk. I think the brand or the one, it's from like the 80s and 90s and some moms in my life would wear it and I would like, like, it'd be like at school I'm or making at a dance. making a cringe face right no. now. No. And I always thought as a kid, it smelled kind of like ice cream, which I know makes no sense. No, I can get that. Do you? Mm -hmm. As a kid, I was like, oh my God, her perfume smells like ice cream. And I, I just thought it made that mom so fancy. Oh. Like, I just thought that those moms were, like, the fanciest, coolest moms. Does it remind and you of passion? I don't know. It's a purple bottle. Like. My mom used to wear it all the time. It was so heavy. 
So I mm. hope it's not heavy because I was it's going for I didn't smell it at all until I Yeah. I was going for no, it every really day like it. lighter. Like she says ice cream, which I do I can see why you say that, but it's not like super not sweet. Not at all. No. I really like it. Thank you. Oh, I, oh okay, yeah. I mean I've never been like I have not worn perfume for years and I was just like she it's she did time. like mine for a second, but then we thought it was weird. Well, to no, have for. I went home and Werner starts sneezing in bed over and over. He goes, "Did you put something on today?" And I was like, "I put on Vicky's perfume." He's like, "Yeah, that's making me sneeze a lot." Oh my god, it's Chanel! How dare you? I know. Oh. So we went together to Sephora, and I was like, "What about this?" And he's like, "I like it." Yeah, it smells really good. Nary but... a sneeze. Oh, good. That's important. Mm -hmm. Chanel Chance is the one I've been wearing since. Oh my god, I have a really funny story about it. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. Oh no. It's, this was, I've been wearing that since like, I want to say, since it came out. I literally, since it was announced. It was like brand new perfume. I bought it and I just, I've worn like it for decades. Like in school or post school? Uh, it's probably like 2001, I feel like. Oh wow. 22 yeah. years. Yeah. I've, I've literally Sponsored worn it forever. Sponsored by Chanel. Chance. Chanel Chance. And I was, um. This is when I was with my other, my ex-boyfriend, the one I met in high school. R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> and, and I went over to his house one day and it, it, it honestly doesn't even, okay. So I, I go to his house and his mom and his sister are sitting in the living room and we say hello, like we greet each other, he and I, and he says, you smell like, and he says this girl's name. And I go, excuse me? And he goes, oh, I mean, yeah, I don't guess it might be. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. And I was like, and I looked at them, his sister and his mom, and they were both like, oh, fuck. Like, I could see the oh, fuck on their face. Which to me in that moment meant, number one, he's obviously cheating on me. And number two, you guys know about it. Oh, I was thinking a past girlfriend. No, no. he didn't have any girlfriends. And we had already been together since like 99. So that oh, was God. Three, yeah. And so he, it was just an odd thing to say. It would be like if Werner said to you right now, God, you smell a lot like Vicky. Oh. It was like that. Oh. It was, oh, wait, was it, a, it was when you knew. Oh, yeah. It's someone oh. I know. Yeah. And you it was like, actually why someone you know who that? was dating his best friend. Oh, my. But she was. God. An interesting person. But anyway, um, he said that to me. And one, one, obviously, why do you know what she smells like? Two, I've been wearing this for. Well, I've been I've Long worn this time. so many times. Why are you just now noticing it? She probably copied me, by the way. Uh, do you still know this person? Mm, no, I was never friends with her. Oh, like okay. I, she tried to be my friend many, many times, but no, I didn't. I never really liked her. But mm -hmm. yeah, I had spent a lot of time with her because they were dating whatever her, his best friend. Um, but so anyway, so that's 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 like one of the stories just kind of like floats yeah. around in my head about that perfume, but. It's funny now. Juicy. Yeah. Okay, I know we were like, literally before we hit record, we're like, you know what? This doesn't have to be an hour. We can't help ourselves. We can't because now we have to talk about Firefly Lane real Just quick. real quick. Real quick. And it was supposed to be Michelle's things we're loving, so we kind of waited. We did. Okay, Firefly Lane. It's on Netflix. It's with, it's with Katherine Heigl. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the, act, the other names. You'll recognize her face. Yeah. And they're on season two, but season two stopped halfway through. And I, in my mind, I thought the show was over. And then all of a sudden I turned on Netflix last week and I'm like, they have more episodes out to finish the season. Yeah. I binged it all yesterday on Mother's Day morning and I sobbed my way through it. Yeah. I watched a little bit today and I so cried already. Good. It's so good. There is a part though, and I want to complain about this and I think it's supposed to be annoying, but it yeah. is this scene where she has an infant, and this is, like, in the 80s, maybe? Mm hmm And she's trying to, like, she's just obsessed with breastfeeding, but it's a, it's really hard for her. It's not happening. The mm -hmm. husband's like, how about we just use formula and you chill out? And she's like, no, I have to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm dedicated to doing this. And so everyone's stressed out. Everyone's crying. It's miserable. Mm -hmm. Then they bring this nurse, the lactation nurse, in, and she says to her, your body was built to do this. This is the most natural thing in the world. And the reason it's not working is because you're so stressed out. So when you mm -hmm. stop being stressed out, it will naturally happen because it's what your body was meant to do. And it made me so fucking angry mm -hmm. because it reminded me of Aaron's, of our conversation with Aaron, where it's like, just because women have been having babies 
for eons, like that doesn't mean that every single woman can do it just like naturally, easily, right. no big deal. Like this is what it's meant to do. Like that's so insulting to me. And it's I, so insulting. It. It's not inclusive. It makes people, it makes women feel like shit when like they can't broken. do it. Like they're broken. It's their fault Ugh. and they can't do their baby. Wrong. Yeah, that's right. They're controllable and they're doing something yeah. wrong. Yeah, I didn't like that. So if you watch it and you feel that way, know that I felt that way. Yeah. You did too. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, look, it's going to be under an hour and I feel really impressed. I'm proud yeah, of us. Yeah, but everyone needs to go watch that and cry their eyes out, okay? It's really good. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, honestly, like watching their friendship through the years, mm -hmm. I thought about you a lot. I mm -hmm. did. And I was like, I hope we grow old together. We will. Like, it would... <laughs> We're going to live on the compound. Or, did we not talk about this? We talk about this? Yeah, but we're like, we have to. It has to happen. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. Okay. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know what it is so you guys can come to. Okay. All right. We love you. We love and, you. And um, now you get to hear the new outro. Ooh. I mean, look, life is just exciting these days. I love it. And Hit oh. it. Oh. <laughs> Wait, go ahead. Uh -huh. No, no, no. That's actually right. Yep, I can stop the video. Hit it! Boom. Oh. Dun, 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 dun.